Hey YouTube, uh, this is Firewizard23. I just wanted to make a video here because I wanted to talk about the news that a Captain Planet live action movie has been green lighted. It's currently being in, in, in the writing stage right now. They're trying to figure out what it's going to be and stuff. And I, I know there's been news about that before, but I think it just kind of switched hands. The, who was going to take it over. And I just want to talk about my own feelings regarding Captain Planet. Because I have ta been watching a lot of episodes of Captain Planet lately, and a couple of things do occur to me in as for the problems of making a movie about Captain uh, featuring the Captain Planet and the Captain Planet uh, cast of characters and such. Uh, first off, the only real way I can see to do... My first initial thought with how you can do this movie is it would have to be an origin story. There's really no way a movie audience would accept just kind of jumping right into action and giving you a little bit of background to this and just kind of going with the characters. No, we have to have basically the origin story. We have to have the origination of the five teen, teens, teens young people who are recruited by Gaia and what their question and what their cause shall be. That has to be part of this in some way. Another problem that occurs is actually Captain Planet himself. Most superhero uh, movies nowadays, the hero is followed pretty much throughout the entire film. So we learn who he is, we learn his backstories, we learn his relationships, we learn that. Captain Planet really only shows up in the series when they need him. In fact, even in the very first episode, Gaia doesn't even hint what how what's going to happen when they put their five powers together. She just says they'll be really surprised when they do. And they just kind of accept Captain Planet just out of nowhere, and that's kind of weird. So somewhere in the origin story, we'll have to kind of at least show Captain Planet in, like, a stasis of some type, explaining that he would be summoned when they put their five powers together. Uh... Another issue I see is going to be the villains of the Captain Planet series. How do you make a villain in a movie? We have several villains to choose from. We have Hoggish Greedly, though I think they'll probably go away from him because actually they, the owners of the Greenly Hog Farms, I believe in Virginia, sued, uh, sued the creators of Captain Planet, arguing that it kind of damaged the reputation of the farm. So I think I think they'll shy away from Hoggish Greedly. Uh, Doctor Blight is just an evil mad scientist who wanted to just do unethical experiments on animals in the environment. We have Verminous Scum, who's the evil mutant rat who him and his rat men had declared war on the environment because of how they look. We have Sly Sludge, who is an evil garbage man who just wants to dump garbage everywhere. We have Duke Nukem, who is a radioactive human being who just wants to absorb gamma radiation and make more of it happen. We have Loot and Plunder. Loot and, pl and Plunder, get it? Plunder. Arguably the most realistic villain of the series. He's more motivated by greed and money. And then there is Zarm, who is the evil... Uh, he is the old spirit of Earth who left in search of other worlds, and he, he represents more chaos and destruction, and simply wants to just cause harm to everybody. Now, Loot and Plunder, out of all these villains, Loot and Plunder is the only one who's... At least his motivations for why he wants to pollute make sense. He is motivated by money. The other characters really aren't motivated by anything other than we're evil because we are evil. It, it's like the old, um, it's the oldest uh, D and D cliche. You know, they're evil because they're evil. We don't have to question it beyond that. They don't have deep motivations or anything. Moon Plunder is at least a realistic villain in that regard. And Zarm, the evil, the former spirit of the earth. He is more of a... his back, He at least has a backstory that he was the former spirit of Earth. Why he turned... I don't remember if why he turned to wanting to be destructive was ever explained, but at least he has a backstory of who he is. So it could be explained very clearly. So we have the problem of villains who aren't really that in-depth, and I fear that trying to create a movie nowadays, especially with all the superhero movies we have now, we need a villain whose at least motivations... If we're going to have a main villain like this, that at least he's... He's recognizable? His... Uh, uh, he's not that boring that I yawn. He's recognizable, and he's someone who we can identify with very quickly as a viewing audience. Like, okay, we get his motivation. 
So where does that leave us for a movie? Well, like I said, it would have to be some kind of origin story. I had a, I had a talk with Tabian00 on YouTube. I had a couple, a little bit of a chat with him just before I made this recording. And I came up with a couple of interesting ideas. Uh, people know who LeVar Burton is. He is... Uh, he was the player of Kumikinte? Uh, Kumi, Kumi Kumi uh, in Roots. He was the main actor in the, in, of the Star of Roots. He was also the host of Reading Rainbow for many years, and he was also the voice of Kwame, uh, the the oldest of the planetaries, the 18-year-old who had the power of Earth. Oh, who coincidentally he was also he was also a black-skinned character, and what I thought of as a really interesting idea. Hear me out. What if the opening of the movie, we come in, yo yo Captain Planet and the Planeteers, or whatever they're going to call the movie, we come into a little house. There is LeVar Burton playing Kwame, an older Kwame, who is going to tell us this story. I will go to Fandango and buy the ticket. If, th- if I hear that's how they're going to open this movie, I will buy the ticket. Because they did something right. They got the person who's the original voice of Kwame. Only problem is you're going to go that route, then we have to find a young actor who's going to be Kwame too. That's, who's going to be almost an identical voice to LeVar. I'm sure they exist, but you know that's going to have to be quite a search to find the right actor. Now, how can we do this? Because another problem with Captain Planet is that the series, the series is a giant PSA. That really can't be avoided. They, almost there are pretentious talks in the show where they literally just stop and say, "All this pollution is damaging the coral reef. If we don't stop them, over it will take years for the coral reef to revive itself. Not to mention the environmental damage that it will cause in the island." You know, I mean, it literally takes its time to discuss how pollution is going to hurt things. That is something that I think the movie needs to avoid. The movie must avoid... It, it, it's got to avoid preaching. And unfortunately, that was something the Captain Planet series did a lot. It really preached the environment, which was its core point. I don't think that's going to work for a movie. I don't think moviegoers are going to want to go to watch a, a, a two-hour PSA. I don't think that's why people want to go there. What could work, then? What if instead of like just preaching about the environment, what if they were walking through environments where they just see the destruction and maybe you know there can be discussions about how they're feeling about it, but they don't really like sit down and pretentiously discuss it. I, I don't like just just kind of like walking through a landfill and just seeing all the garbage. Like what if it's just it's the sound, it's the coloring, it's the mood. What if you just establish a mood like okay something isn't right here. In other wor- in other words, make it subtle. We want to be subtle about it. So that's something this movie has to be. It has to be subtle about this. <clears throat> now what I'm going to say next kind of uh, uh, goes against that, but hear me out. I don't think this could work as an action film. At least not as a complete action film. I think this has to be a much more intellectual, philosophical film to work. Because I think if you go to an action film, if you have any of these villains and you go for straight-up action you're going to disappoint some fans. You clearly can't have all these villains here because there'd be no way to include backstory and clearly develop all these characters within, say, a one, an hour and a half or two hour time. There's just no way to do it. Not to mention having all the Planeteers, Gaia, Captain Planet. There's just too much going on. So we have to simplify it. And my, my vote for the villain of the Captain Planet movie would be Zarm. The only reason I say that is because once we've established Gaia, we could establish Zarm very quickly as being just basically the opposite of Gaia. And this is my pitch for the film. What if, you know, you know, here we have, you know, Kwame, he's going to discuss this. He wants to tell about one of the hardest battles that the Planeteers had to fight. Okay, the hardest battle they had to fight. You know, we go back, and he just, he just, and he narrates how they came to Hope Island, how they, got, how they were given the rings, and they became Planeteers, and how they started doing Planeteer-type stuff. We have maybe some little vignettes of stuff of them doing things, but we basically established that they were planeteers for a period of time. Then at a certain point, Zarm showed up on Hope Island. And we have maybe just a little bit of interaction between him and Gaia, and Zarm proposes a challenge. You know, he's, you know, he's created another dastardly plan. What he does is he traps the planeteers in, like, almost like, like a, um... Uh, some kind of bubble. He's trapped them in, a bu- like, a reality bubble where... He's going to show them what the world was like when they started being Planeteers and what it's like now. I don't think it would be wrong 
for me to say, and I, I believe environmentalists would approve of this, that you know we've made great strides in environmentalism, but we also have problems that have been risen from our environment as well. You know, we have people and people cite the changing weather patterns as as signs of global warming. You know, you know, trash disposal is still an issue. Although we have recycling stuff now, but there are things that we can discuss now. D- new things that can be discussed now, or things of problems that are that are still here, or still need addressing. And what I'm thinking that Zarm's big plan is, he basically wants to break the will of the planeteers. You know, during these little vignettes of them seeing all this trash, seeing all the trash, the pollution, we see them using their powers here and there. But what Zarm ultimately wants to do is he wants to break their spirit to try to save the planet. Here's why: that spirit, that hope of saving the planet, this was established in the cartoon series. That is actually the fuel and the power of their rings. If their rings stop working, they cannot summon Captain Planet. And Zarm, you know, ultimately they're gonna, you know, we'll have all five kids. They're gonna see the various problems and get the kids, the five young people, disheartened about it. Like, you know, we're almost kind of questioning whether or not we can really affect the world enough. They've affected the world, but is it enough? Is it worth even trying to continue? So what's going to happen is Zarm's going to say, you know. I want them to almost get to a point where it's like, you know, we don't want to be part of this anymore, and Zarm's like, fine, then you need only do one thing. And they're like, what's that? Summon Captain Planet. He will be able to break, you know, he'll be, he's the only one who's strong enough to break this, to break, the, you know, this bubble he's got them in. You know, he can, he can actually break them out. And what's happened is their will has been shaken to the point where their rings don't function anymore. And then, you know, we have Zarm, ha 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 ha, you know, I've defeated you, Planeteers, and, you know, you know you're know you going to watch as the world dies, you know, completely dies, because you're not there to help anybody. And what I want from that point is, I want the Planeteers to be redeemed in some way. They did a really good episode with Kwame called Kwame's Crisis in Season 1, where Kwame, he's disheartened by a town that is covered in garbage, and the people just simply are have given up. It just seems like such a huge problem, they don't know how to deal with it. And Kwame's ring stops working. So they can't summon Captain Planet unless he has the will to... Will, has the will and the hope to save the planet. His ring doesn't function. So what I want is them to almost be completely disheartened, but then be heartened by what they've done. Maybe like Gaia actually intervenes and says, you know, you know, things look bad, but we can still try. And then she like shows them that there are things that that things that they have done are worthwhile and like all the recycling efforts and all the environmentalism and they have done things that are important and that their faith gets restored and then it's a very high point in the movie because like everyone's waiting for it at this point people want to see the summon of captain planet as 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 cheesy as the idea is as cheesy as captain planet always is i guarantee some people will go to this movie because they want to see captain planet get summoned and just, as a final, just, you know, we still have faith, all their rings do work, and lo and behold, they do summon Captain Planet. Who just, you know, we can just do some, you know, beat him up with the bad guy villain. But then, what if we just left it on a very subtle note, that this, maybe just them sitting around a table at Hope Island, where they actually discuss what they saw. And, you know, they will continue to fight for their planet, but they acknowledge there's still a lot of work to do. And just leave it for the audience don't really have so much a good ending, but leave it for the audience to say, you know, here are all these problems you saw. You know, we are having issues of warming. We still have overpopulation problems. We still have pollution issues. You know, what, what, do you, what would you do in this case? And just leave it for a discussion, because I think the big legacy of Captain Planet isn't so much that Captain Planet was popular. It has nostalgia. I guarantee anyone who's like 30-something, I can say Captain Planet, they know who I'm talking about. I think a set of messages and the imagery of Captain Planet has maintained itself. And I think, as cheesy as the cartoon was, those messages held. That, you know, there is something to say for saving our environment and being, and being, and being good to our planet. There's something good there. I think, as a movie, it needs to ta- take itself seriously. I don't think a cheesy... Go, planet! I, I don't think that's going to work here. I think we need to be a little bit... I think I think we need to be a little darker here. And say, so, you know, there's things to do, but are the planeteers... Are we able to continue? Can we continue these things about the planet? I even had another idea where what if at some point they summoned Captain Planet, but he was almost cynical at this point. That 
I, I read some somewhere like about the descriptor of Captain Planet, I think it was on Wikipedia, where Captain Planet understands that he could clean up all the pollution in the world, but it would be meaningless if people still polluted. So what if even Captain Planet, by even these young people's feelings, has become cynical? That this isn't even worth it anymore, and even he's been depowered. To the point that they almost need this recharge to say, you know, we can do this, and that revives Captain Planet. It's, it's just some weird ideas I had thrown around, but I I really... They got a long row to hoe trying to make this movie work, but I, I think in what I've talked about, there's a lot of good ideas there that they they need to take it seriously. It needs to be an origin story. God, get LeVar Burton. Get LeVar Burton to narrate this like he did in Reading Rainbow. I get... I mean, you know, he's not going to be, you know, but it flies in the sky. You know, he's not going to do that, but I mean... If he's doing a storytelling, you got a leg up right there. Because most people who are Captain F- Planet fans know LeVar Burton voiced Kwame. And I can see, I mean, just, you know, just imagine watching a trailer and you just see LeVar Burton pop up dressed as Kwame and he says, I'm here to tell you a story. And he's going to tell the story. He's going to tell this story. And we just see vignettes. You know, just like, you know, you know, our planet still needs help is it worth fighting for? And, like, just... It can really be this more intellectual and philosophical and environmental discussions. But they don't have to be pretentious discussions. They can be, you know, how do we convince humanity to keep fighting for the planet when we have maybe even our other social issues that have come up now? You know, we have wars going on. How do we... How do we keep that as a focus? I just wanted to put that out there. I, th- I thought that'd be an interesting idea. I mean, I'm interested to see what's in the comment section for this, what people think about a Captain Planet live-action movie. Tell me what you think of what I've said. Uh, this is Firewoods of 23. Take care, and bye-bye for now. The power is yours. Hey, I just wanted to make a final little note here. I, I just remembered something else that I talked about with Tabian00. Another big problem with Captain Planet, that's, that's a big criticism of the series itself, is that Captain Planet himself is a genie to come in and save the day and solve problems of, an, of the environment. And the series receives heavy criticism for not actually talking about what actually causes causes environmental problems and pollution. It, it never really addresses them. We just have eco-villains who want to destroy, to destroy, because we're evil and the planet is bad. You know, So it doesn't really resolve issues. The Lorax, for, I'll bring the Lorax in for example, the Lorax actually tries to address that on some level. Uh, I talk about the original animated version that was like in the 70s, where you know it said, you know, you have to stop cutting down the trees, but if I stop cutting down the trees, we'll lose all these jobs. Is that good business? Does that make sense? And that's a dilemma. That's actually a reasonable dilemma that's worth discussing. Whereas Captain Planet really tried to do that, and Captain Planet himself is a giant genie who just comes in to save the day all the time. And that's another big reason why I don't think as an action film Captain Planet would work. Because if you... Let's say you just have an eco-villain, the kids go out, they get into the various hijinks, they get captured, they summon Captain Planet, he saves the day, and you'll... The power is yours! What is... I don't think that's speaking intelligently to the audience. That's just kind of saying, we could fix this problem of an oil spill all over our coast because Captain Planet was here. Well, Captain Planet isn't real. I mean, at the end of the day, Captain Planet is not a real person. He's not a real entity. What the kids do for the environment, the actual cleaning up of pollution, teaching recycling, those are actual real things that we can tangibly do. I don't think to create a movie that exploits Captain Planet in an action way is really a respectful way to do this. At least, I don't think it would speak respectfully to its audience. I just wanted to mention that because it was something I wanted to bring up. So, uh, take care. The power is yours.